If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Guy and in my channel, I usually just do a bunch of RC car stuff and occasionally I'll throw in some outdoor activities like camping, biking, etc. So in today's video, I will talk about the Nitro Slash by Traxxas and I'm going back to my roots. I bought this a while back. I also have the 3 Racing D4 Drift chassis and they've both been sitting around for a while so I figured that it's a good time to take them out and at least do a quick unboxing video. Let's go with the Traxxas Nitro Slash. I have the electric version. When I was buying this, I was debating between the Slash or Rustler and in my collection right now, just only two Nitro cars that I have right now is this and the HPI R40. The HPI is for display nowadays and I don't even run it much because it's not easy to get parts and that thing is kind of classic to me and it actually means a lot to me because I bought it a long time ago and that was one of the last Nitro cars that I have. On this channel you guys see a lot of electric cars but in the past I played a lot of Nitro cars especially when I was in high school. Most of my cars were touring Nitro ones by HPI and I, occasionally I would just Played my friends uh, Kyosho and or Associated TC3. Back then, Nitro Touring cars were so popular. You got tons of cool brands like HPI, uh, Million, Associated, Yokomo, Kyosho, and Tamiya's that they all had cool Nitro cars. So after all these years, I've decided to buy another Nitro car to play with. Since the HPI has been sitting there, I don't want to run it. And hopefully I don't run into the same issue like the HPI where after 10 years, it's hard to get parts. So that's why I went with the Traxxas because they are known to be around for a while. There were other options that I was considering such as the Exceed or the Kyosho Inferno. But just based on past history, Traxxas normally keeps the car around longer. I don't remember the exact price but I did pay about close to retail. That was before the huge price raise by Traxxas. So let's look at the box real quick. This is the Mike Jenkins edition. Love the black body, TQI controller and it comes with the TRX 3.3 engine. On this side is the box. You see pictures of the chassis. Talks about the transmission, metal gears inside, oil fill shocks, and it does have the easy start system, which I've never used before. I've always used a, either a post start or a starter box. But it is cool to give this a try because starter box are pretty cumbersome sometimes and pretty heavy with all the batteries attached to it. Without further ado, let's pull this thing out. This is the TQI transmitter. Usually the higher end ones come with the TQI and the lower ones comes with the regular TQ which doesn't have as much adjustment. Navigating through this thing can be difficult sometimes because there's like a list of stuff to go through. However, this transmitter has the Bluetooth link enabled. So if you buy that little Bluetooth module, it will make everything much easier. Upside down. That's pretty neat. It comes with a few bottles. Traxxas is really making this RTR. They included a lot of stuff. But it comes with a 7.2 volt Nickel metal, hydride battery, and it has a Tamiya connector. Traxxas decal. Got the TQI transmitter performance guide. Exploded view and some parts list. Owner's manual. These are also out on the website for download, which I usually put on my phone because when I'm outside playing, it comes in really handy. Got some preload clips. Four of shocks. And this. Is the easy start system, one zip tie, and a DC peak charger, air filter oil, got some extra body clips and stuff. Also check this out, comes with an extra glow plug. Let's look at the body real quick. Wow, I like it. The other one I have is in red and black and then I also had another one earlier. Tons of different colors of red and white, but I sold that one off. They've also vented the front windshield and the back to give it some airflow. It's a single speed. This is a rear wheel drive RC car. It has the Typical Traxxas telescopic universal shafts, adjustable turnbuckles for the camber. And in the front, you got the turnbuckles for the camber and the toes. Bell crank steering system, so saver. Shocks are really smooth. This is a pretty big fuel tank. On my other touring cars, they're usually smaller. They were predominantly 12 engines, sometimes 15. The front feels a little bit harder than the rear, just slightly. I do have a set of Batlands. If I want to play in loose dirt, I want to see how these perform first. If they slide too much, then I'll put the bad ends in here. It's a super long and narrow design. The arms look really similar to my electric version, but I haven't verified if they're the same yet. So I got to look into that. And the bottom, there's a hole that can access the flywheel. So this is good because if the easy start system fails on me, I can actually use a starter box to bump it. Here we got a tune pipe and the header. The tune pipe is plastic. And here's the motor to the easy start system. So instead of using the conventional igniter, you just stick it in here. 
to heat it up. This one has a wire that connects to the, the EC Star battery thingy. So I probably just put it here and it will charge up everything and heat up the igniter. Not the igniter, I'm gonna heat up the glow plug. Man, I'm really excited about this. Getting to run the nitro again. The sound, the freaking smell. Everything about nitro cars, they're just a lovely, lovely experience. I know some people hate it, but I like them all. Anything to do with RC cars, I like them all, guys. Some exciting times ahead. But before I go, let's put this aside and take a look at the three racing drift car. This is an older kit. They already came out the D5 version and I'm debating what to do with this. I think I'm just gonna build it, mess with it. If I don't like it, then I'll probably sell it off or just keep the rolling chassis as a display item because I do have a body for this and I'm thinking about putting the Toyota Trueno in there. Let's open it up. Got some cool decals and the manual. It's a little bit basic but I think it's good enough for me to build this kit without issues. The packaging is actually really nice. I'm just feeding the chassis right now. It looks pretty high quality. This is my first three racing kit, so I'm not too familiar with the brand. I just read about it, but from what I've heard, they're actually really good. And they used to make aftermarket parts for some other big company. So most likely, I know they won't disappoint. And looking at this right now, it seems pretty good. The drift tires, bumper. Yeah, just looking at these, they look like composite. All the hardwares, they look really shiny and tough. Comes with bearings, constant velocity shafts. It looks good, guys. All right, there we have it. I will build this up in the future. This is a rear wheel drive chassis, and I already have a specific servo for it and a gyro system. So it's going to be interesting and fun to put this together. I have no clue how to set it up. I suck in drifting, but I always like to tap into different genre of RC cars. Before I run this thing, I have to look at the manual because with Metro cars, I have to break in the engine correctly. I did browse through the manual earlier, and it looks like Trax's method of breaking in the engine is slightly different than what I've done in the past with my other engines. So to make sure these engines have long-lasting life, breaking in these engines are very, very important. And the glow plug does not work, but it's still heating up the glow plug, so this is good. When I first started up, it was a little too lean, so I was able to adjust it back, and the idle was a little bit off too, so I adjust the idle correctly. So it is getting later, I'm just gonna stop today and uh, continue next time. So, first tank on, a couple more to go. We come up here for a better view.